Good morning and welcome to Midweek Prayers here at Trinity and St. Francis Churches in Warren County, Pennsylvania. I'm Father Matthew Scott, Vicar of the Episcopal Mission of Warren County, which is those two congregations working together to bring the mission of Jesus to our area. Glad to have you with us. Uh, as, as our custom, I invite you please to check in, say hello using the comment features on Facebook and YouTube and let people know you're viewing with us and that you're praying along with us. Um, thank you so much for gathering. And since this is all about prayer, if at any time you feel moved to pray, please feel encouraged to share your prayers, again, using the comment features on Facebook and YouTube so that we can share in prayer together. This is how we're gathering, and it is God's holy way for all of us as disciples to follow him. So We'll be picking up midweek prayer using the online resource bcponline.org. Anytime you want to use one of the Book of Common Prayer offices, an easy way to get to it there. Here's our daily office, order of service for noonday. Let us pray. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Psalm this week will be Psalm 126, and I invite you to pray it along with me. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then were we like those who dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad indeed. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the watercourses of the Negev. Those who sowed with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying the seed, will come again with joy, shouldering their sheaves. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. For our reading today, we'll, as has become our custom, borrow from the scriptures appointed for the daily office. And this is the New Testament reading appointed for today. It comes from Paul's letter to the Galatians. It reads this. But when Cephas came to Antioch, I opposed him to his face, because he stood self-condemned. For until certain people came from James, he used to eat with the Gentiles. But after they came, he drew back and kept himself separate for fear of the circumcision faction. And the other Jews joined him in this hypocrisy, so that even Barnabas was led astray by their hypocrisy. When I saw that they were not acting consistently with the truth of the gospel, I said to Cephas before them all, If you, though a Jew, live like a Gentile, not like a Jew, how can you compel the Gentiles to live like Jews? We ourselves are Jews by birth and not Gentile sinners. Yet we know that a person is justified not by the works of the law, but through faith in Jesus Christ. And we have come to believe in Christ Jesus so that we might be justified by faith in Christ and not by doing the works of the law, because no one will be justified by the works of the law. But if, in our effort to be justified in Christ, we ourselves have been found to be sinners, is Christ then a servant of sin? Certainly not. But if I build up again the very things that I once tore down, then I demonstrate that I am a transgressor. For through the law I die to the law, so that I might live to God. I have been crucified with Christ, and it is no longer I who live, but it is Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me, and gave himself for me. I do not nullify the grace of God, for if justification came through the law, then Christ died for nothing. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Brief meditation for us today. Paul's letter to the Galatians, like many of his letters, are attempting to uh, attempts to by Paul to teach his congregations that he left behind as he considered continued his missionary journeys throughout the Mediterranean region. Here he is in that first century, just less than a generation after Jesus has died, and he's spreading the faith far and wide, planting churches and then moving on. 
but then writing back to them. You know, he hears about what's going on and he tries to respond. And one of the things he heard was some of the leaders in Galatea were separating themselves from each other, you know, judging some things to be okay and some things not to be okay. And therefore, we have to be separate. And Paul realizes that this is just what we were doing before. We Jews, he and, and Cephas and some of the others, we would separate ourselves from others and say, we can't be together. This is unclean. That's the law speaking. The idea that we as human beings can organize ourselves in some way to be perfect before God. Paul says, no, that's not how this works anymore. Don't you understand? If we go back to the way we used to, then we didn't learn the lesson. If we go back to this idea that it's about making sure the right people are together and the wrong people are away from us, then we missed the whole point that Christ saves us from thinking it's up to us to build a perfect system. It's not up to us to make the world perfect. He has made the world good. And it's only through our faith in him that we're going to know that perfection and experience that. Thus, Paul commits again to this beautiful baptismal formulation. I have died to Christ now, and he lives in me. It's our life baptized into the death of Christ and our rising in him that frees us from the bonds of this world, from having to make this world perfect in order to be saved, and into a life where we know we are saved. We trust that to God and then live lives out of thanksgiving for what God has done for us. We look to heal what is broken. We look to, to tear down barriers and tie the world together more intimately under the faith of God who has made all things new. Uh, this has definitely been a trying time in our polity, a trying time in our own lives as we combat COVID, a trying time for us human beings in so many ways in this early 21st century world. We should never be led into this idea that somehow it's on us to make the world perfect. No, it's on us out of thanksgiving for what God has done and full and rich in faith for what Christ is doing for us that we act out of love to one another, that we look to bind up wounds, that we look to do the right thing, that we look to heal others, that we look ultimately to heal the world. Not because we have to save the world ourselves, but because Christ already has. And our lives are redeemed in him. So if today you're carrying any kind of burdens around that, if you're feeling anxiety and fear because something has to be done, surrender that and let God fill your heart today. Open your hands to him and say, okay, you can hold this because you already have held this, Jesus. You on the cross said, this also I redeem. And I can surrender that and find a way today, today to act out of thanksgiving for God and give to another out of thanksgiving to God and heal something that's broken, out of thanksgiving to God and bring blessings wherever I go. In that way, we have died to Christ and live now in him. I've died to sin and now live in Christ, who is a blessing to all creation. God bless you all today in that work. We continue now with noonday prayer, picking up with the prayers starts here. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry come to you. Let us pray. Almighty Savior, who at noonday called your servant Paul to be an apostle to the Gentiles, we pray you to illumine the world with the radiance of your glory, that all nations may come and worship you, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. About your prayers this time, your thanksgivings as well for the blessings you are experiencing, most especially the crown of glory that is Christ Jesus and his relationship with all of us. I give a special thanks to all the folks who are finding ways to support all the wonderful loving ministries in this community, for our public servants who are volunteering their time and giving so much of themselves in hope that they might do good things for others, and that, of course, that our dissensions may be eliminated and our brotherhood and sisterhood find new recourse in our civil lives. Thus we conclude for today.
Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.